Hello and welcome to the Integrum Retro Channel. My name is Jason Baker, and in this multi-part video series, I'm gonna show you how to configure multiple different kind of controller types in RetroArch. So in this video, I'm gonna focus on wireless controllers and how to configure them for a couple different types of emulators. Specifically, we'll start with an easy one such as Nintendo, and then even more tricky when it comes to MAME and arcade games. I'm also going to cover the different types of overrides and how do controllers get mapped within RetroArch itself. It can be a little complicated, so I'm going to take you through the internals and some of the best tips and tricks to do this at a larger scale. Shall we play a game? You see, all of this started for me when I wanted to make my own custom 16 terabyte retro drive. One of the requirements was, is I wanted to be able to play every single game with my arcade joysticks and with my wireless controllers. I've actually accomplished that. And now this is going to be one of my step-by-step -step videos to show you how to do this yourself. Now, unlike most individual emulator software, you usually map your physical controller that you have in hand to that particular emulator and you're good to go. Well, because RetroArch can actually work with almost, I'm using almost 95 different cores myself. Um, what RetroArch does is it will actually simulate a controller. In fact, it's called a RetroPad. What your goal is, is to take whatever device you have and map it to the buttons of a RetroPad. Now the RetroPad looks just like, in this case, a, a PlayStation controller. It has two analog uh, uh, joysticks, it has a D-pad, it has the four buttons, the two shoulders, the two trigger buttons, a select and start, and then potentially a home button like you would have, say, on an Xbox controller. Now it doesn't matter if you have wireless controllers, a tank stick, arcade joysticks, your goal is to map all those buttons and controls to this RetroPad. Now it sounds complicated, but here's the advantage. That retro pad is now seen by every single emulator. You now essentially have one controller for every single emulator that you could possibly use in RetroArch. So it looks like this. You configure your controller for a retro pad. That retro pad is then configured for whatever emulator core that you're gonna work with. So it allows you to swap out multiple devices, go from wireless to an arcade joystick, and not much action, nothing really changes according to the emulator cores themselves. This is what makes RetroArch so powerful and really my choice for why I went with RetroArch versus a collection of individual emulators. So I'm gonna show you how to configure MAME utilizing the arcade joysticks as well as wireless. We're gonna configure a Nintendo Entertainment System and we'll override MAME and we'll also do some controller and core overrides along with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm using a vanilla install of RetroArch. Now I've highly customized a lot of the configs on my individual drive, but uh, just to show you out of the box what this can do. You'll notice in that lower left hand corner, um, it recognized my Xbox wireless controller. And the reason being is, is um, RetroArch actually has a number of configuration files for most of the individual controllers on the market. So the first thing that you wanna look at is to actually go to settings and go to drivers. The drivers are gonna dictate the types of controllers that it's going to detect. So if you take a look at controller, you're going to need to understand the difference of different types of controllers here. Now, Xbox controllers use X input, right? It is a specific type of controller driver. If you're gonna be using something like an arcade stick, which runs off of an iPack, you may want to consider using a D input, which stands for direct input. So RetroArch may or may not be able to see or properly configure your devices unless you've chosen the proper controller. Now, HID, which we'll cover in another video, is usually covered for um, light gun games. So if you have a light gun device, you're going to need to use the raw hardware ID for that. But in my case here, for most wireless controllers, if they're Xbox compatible, you can just leave or set the driver controller to X input. Now, the next thing here is under settings, you're going to want to go down to input. Now, RetroArch can be confusing because there's actually two menus to configure inputs. The one under settings and input actually uh, configures your physical controller mapping to the retro pad. So notice here the device type is retro pad. And this is the virtual retro pad that's going to be shown to the actual emulator itself. So if I go here, you can see, well, wait a minute. How do I know what device is going to be mapped to this retro pad? 
Well, fortunately, if you to look at device index, I only have the one controller powered on. But on my arcade system, I'll have multiple devices. So I would simply go through here and select which controller I want to map to player number one. In this case here, it's gonna be the Xbox One controller. Now, notice here, I can configure or change the button layout. So I can change the D-pad, maybe up could be down, down could be right. There's really no need to change this because that's why the auto config files exist. So I have a successful mapping of my physical controller to the retro pad. What I may want to customize is the retro pad to the actual game itself, because all of this looks good. So let's go ahead and load up a game. So there we go in the lower left hand corner, it automatically recognizes my controller. So let's see how well the controls have been mapped to the actual game itself. So I can go ahead and click start. Looks like I'm in so far. Okay, so first experiment, you know, hit the button, see what happens. Okay, so my A is fire and my B is jump. That's a, I'm okay with that, right? And uh, I can use my D-pad to go up and down, but I can't use my analog sticks, right? If you remember, the Nintendo didn't have analog sticks. It just simply had a D-pad to go um, up and down. So how am I going to fix that? Maybe that's something I would like to remap. So let's go ahead and focus on that. The first thing is, is how do I want to change this controller and how do I do it specifically for this game? When I went into the RetroArch menu, notice I'm in the Quick menu. But let me show you how you would get here in case you got lost. You're at the main menu, go to Quick menu. Now what I want to do is I want to find controls. These controls are mapping the retro pad to the actual emulated game. So this way I'm changing the way the retro pad is mapped, which will change my effect on the game. But it doesn't change my physical controller, which is really, really nice. So if I go here to Port 1 Controls, First of all, notice there's a section called analog to digital type. It says none. That means all of my analog joystick um, options are going to be ignored. If I click on this, I can choose left analog, which means my left analog here on the joystick is going to control the D-pad. So I can use the D-pad or the left analog and kind of have some of that convenience. What happens if I didn't like the button layout? Well, in my case here, what if I want to swap the A and B buttons? I can certainly do that. What I can do is just simply select B. So when I hit A on my controller, it's actually going to be B. And then when I hit B, it's actually going to be A. So I've swapped this particular order. Now I can immediately go back to the game. And now you can see here, I can use my analog stick. And now my bottom button, which used to be fire, is now jump. And my this button here, which used to be fire, which used to be jump, is now fire. Okay. Now, what if we want to save these configurations specifically for this game, or maybe for the entire Nintendo Entertainment System itself? So let's go back into the RetroArch menu. And again, I'm going to show you from the main menu because sometimes you may end up and get a little lost in the menu system. So let's start with the main menu. Let's go over to Quick Menu, and then let's go back to Controls because what we want to do is override the default controls. Notice here, there are three different settings. I can save a game remap file, a content directory remap, or a core remap. Now, honestly, content and core usually are exactly the same. So you really have two choices here. Do you wanna save these controls just for Contra, or do you wanna save it for all the Nintendo Entertainment System itself? Well, to be safe, because I don't want to break something else, let's just save the game remap file. And it's actually going to save any controller configurations that I've done for any controllers that are actually connected. So we got a pop-up window and it says it was saved, but where is that file? Let's go to Windows Explorer and let me show you. Now, from the RetroArch home directory, go into the config folder, then go to the remaps folder. In that folder, you're going to see the name of the emulator that is holding your remap file. Now, how do you figure out what that emulator is? Well, if we go back here to RetroArch, it's actually at the bottom of the screen. So I'm running the Messin emulator. And so when I go back to the Windows Explorer, there's a Messin folder. Inside of that folder is gonna be my individual game remaps. So here is the Contra USA remap file. 
And without going into details to what each of these configs mean, notice here these three lines. Input player one analog D-pad mode is set to one. That means it's true. Because notice I didn't change player two, three, or four, or five. They are still going to be remaining stuck with the D-pad. Also see here how I changed the button order. Now I don't know what the numbers mean, but it really doesn't matter because I punched the button that I wanted to change for each of those different features. So now this particular game has been remapped. If I want to get rid of it, I can come in here and delete this file, or I can delete it from the RetroArch menu. Now back in the RetroArch menu, what happens if I save the core remap file? Well, let's hit return and find out. Now that I've remapped this a second time, Let's go back to Windows Explorer, and now you're going to see not a game remap file, but a core remap file. So the core remap file is always going to match the name of the emulator, which will also map the directory. So this is really helpful in troubleshooting if you're wondering why your controls got messed up and you never saved a remap for that particular game. What RetroArch does, it does it in the order of specificity. If you have a remap for the game, it will always override a remap for the core. But if you have no override for the game, then it's going to look for the core as a backup. And so if I go here to Messen, notice I'll have the same changes here, but this is going to be for every game that I ever play. So if you ever make a mistake and accidentally overwrite the entire core, you can go in and to the config directory and delete that file. Now let's go ahead and really raise the bar and we're going to map my existing Xbox controller that I have in hand and try to map this to the button layout for Street Fighter. So Street Fighter obviously has an eight-way joystick and it has six different button controls. Uh, we're gonna have jab strong and fierce punches and short forward and roundhouse kicks. So the way I want to lay it out on this, obviously I, I don't have a joystick here. I've got a wireless controller. I'd like to map it out this way. So I would like the A to be jab and the X to be short kick. Then for the medium, I would like the strong punch to be B and the Y to be forward kick. So this way I've got my uh, short and medium at an angle and then of course my kick, uh, my short and medium kicks at an angle. Now then for the stronger hits, I would like the roundhouse kick to be on the left uh, because um, all of my kicks are on the left of the joystick and then of course my fierce punch will be the right shoulder. So with that in mind, Essentially, what we have to do is map this to the retro pad. Now, something to point out is this. Notice the Xbox button A is equivalent to the retro pad B, and the B is equivalent to A, and the X is equivalent to Y, and the Y is equivalent to X. So I honestly recommend you write this down because this is gonna become very important. What we're going to look at is we are going to look at what MAME sees. MAME is going to see the retro pad. And we are going to have to take that and map that to the right buttons that we want uh, for the individual different items. So essentially, let's take a look at this again. This is my goal. I want to configure A and B to be jab and strong punch. And then, of course, X and Y to be short and uh, forward kick. So let's go ahead and load up Street Fighter and see if we can map this out. Now I'm going to start uh, Street Fighter in two player mode. Uh, this way it's going to be a little bit easier. I don't have to be distracted by uh, characters attacking me. Now with once the game starts, I'm going to hit the A button and notice that A here is kick. So how am I going to change this to punch? The thing is, is if you take a look at the RetroArch menu and you take a look at the controls, go down to port one controls, and let's take a look at this. Uh, all I see is A, B, X, Y. So what I can see is that it's mapping an A, B, and X, Y to MAME. For example, my existing A button is being produced to MAME as a B button, but I'm not really sure what MAME sees it as. So let's go ahead and go back into the game itself. Hit the tab key to open up the MAME menu. Go to input this machine. And notice here, for jab punch, the Y, if it sees a Y from the retro pad, that is gonna be the jab punch. So all I have to do is go back into the main menu and notice here that the A button was mapped to B. It was not mapped to Y. So let's go ahead and change this to Y. In fact, we'll go ahead and take the other Y and we'll just clear it. 
and give it nothing. All right, so now what I've done is remember, I want the A button to be punch. And in MAME, punch is Y. So let's go ahead and exit out of this menu, hit the tab key to exit out of the main menu. And now I'm hitting A and that is punch. Great. So what about B? Well, remember I want B to be a stronger or the medium punch. So let's go ahead and take a look at that again. So hit the tab key. Strong punch is X. So if the retro pad sees X, I need to configure my Xbox B button to be X. So I go in here and notice where it says B button is currently assigned to A. We will assign B button to X and so on and so forth. Now, it looks like I have another X here. We'll go ahead and clear that. And then we'll hit the tab key. Now we've got A for fast punch, B for stronger punch. Great, okay, now I need right shoulder. Okay, right shoulder I wanted to be my fierce punch. So again, I'll hit the tab key. Fierce punch in this case is going to be Joy L1. So L1, remember, is my left shoulder. I would like it to be right shoulder. So again, go into the RetroArch menu. And in my case here, I want the right bumper. So, um, but of course in MAME, it was the L. So I have to change the R to an L. And then of course I'll change this one to an R. So yes, this can be sort of tedious and not every game is going to look exactly alike, but I think you're starting to get the point here. So let's go back here. A is fast, B is medium, and here we go. So my right shoulder is gonna be a fierce punch. So this should be a roundhouse kick, so that's good. And X and Y are currently unassigned. So then I've got my short kick, which is gonna be assigned to B. Go back into the menu. And on my Xbox controller, I want the letter X to be mapped to my fast punch. So let's go and find X. So here is X, auto X. And it was B in MAME. And then the, that must be Y must be the remainder, which is A. And I, everything should be uh, functioning at that point. Okay, so we'll go back to MAME. Now I've got A for fast, B for medium, right shoulder for hard punch, X for fast kick, Y for medium kick, and left shoulder for roundhouse. And there you go. Now that I've mapped it, I certainly want to save this, but I would highly recommend you don't save this to the core because MAME has all sorts of weird configurations. So I'm just gonna simply save this as a game map refile. Now, just to uh, reiterate, where can you find the remap files? Let's go to Windows Explorer. So in the RetroArch directory, remember, go to the config file, then go to the remaps, go to MAME in our, in our case here, and there is the Street Fighter II remap. And so you can see here, it's actually remapped all my individual buttons. And so if I'd like to revert that, I can simply just delete this file when I'm done. There you have it. Now I can play main games, arcade games, console games, mapping them exactly how I want them to be and trying to map them to the original makeup of either the arcade or the actual consoles, depending on which device I'm working with. Now, other things uh, are is these files are completely shareable. So if you have other individuals that want those arcades to be mapped exactly like the originals or maybe even the consoles um, as, as close as possible, you can share these files. So I really hope that uh, this has really kind of brought you a little bit closer to understanding how you can do remapping in RetroArch. Now, for the next set of videos, I plan on uh, covering trackballs, uh, spinners, light gun games, and also joysticks that are not automatically recognized by RetroArch. So how do you make your own uh, mapping mechanism? So with that, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe. Also, please comment uh, below on exactly what you would like to see next or if there's anything confusing that you want a deeper dive. And I spent a, a, over a year building this 16 terabyte drive, making it so all of this works out of the box, especially with many of these fighting games, mapping it to all of the arcade joysticks. Uh, so this way, many others could enjoy the same configuration and setup that I have as well. So with that, we're going to go ahead and conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching.